So, today we are going to discuss customer need. So, let us try to understand that why do you need to find out what the customer really wants in a product. This is required because we have to ultimately develop a product concept before we start manufacturing the product. So, we start with product concept therefore, so product concept means what actually? So, product concept will mean that it indicates form, function, features and specifications of a product. So, all of them put together is basically a product concept. Once the concept is ready then only we can really start manufacturing the product. Now, the concept development is a set of activities. If we want to develop the con concept, there is a set of activities that we follow in order to develop the right concept. What are those activities? It is shown in this particular slide. The first one is identification of customer need. So, need identification is the very first step. This is followed by establishing broad target specifications. After that, the third one is generate product concepts. That is once the broad specification is ready about the product and then only we can start thinking about the different concepts that we can have. And we should generate not just one concept, we should generate multiple concepts. So, if you are working in a team, then each team member can generate an independent concept. So, that could be 3, 4 concepts if the team members are 3 or 4. So, once we generate a few concepts, the next step comes choosing the best concept out of those 4. We cannot really start with all those 4 concepts together. So, we have to finally, arrive at one single concept and we will see that how do I decide which concept is the best concept. But through some kind of brainstorming exercises, a design team will finally arrive at choosing the right concept. So, once a particular concept is chosen, the design parameters are fixed now, they are frozen. We start first test the product concept. So, we try to test it and that means, we can make a model or a prototype and go for actual testing in a laboratory setup or laboratory condition. And based on this, the results that we get, we may need to go for little modifications of the concept or little modification of the specifications. And thereafter only, we set the final specifications of the product. So, initially a prototype is made and the prototype will be tested in a laboratory setup and if required, then we will see whether the performance is good or not so good, whatever it is. And after that, if required, we will modify either the product concept or the specifications, whatever it may require. And then after only, the final specifications are set. And once the final specifications are set, they are actually frozen. And now, this 
design and the, the specifications along with it will go for downstream development. That is how the, these are the various steps of concept development. Therefore, you see that the very starting point is need identifications and that is the key for concept development. So, question is now how to identify the customer need? What procedure we should follow to find out what exactly the customer wants? See, finally, you have to remember that whatever we design, we are designing not for ourselves. We are designing a product for the market where customers are there. So, we have to offer something that the customers are looking for. If we offer something which the customers do not want, then it will not sell in the market. And any commercial enterprise will not really venture out in such exercise where there is a chance that the product is not going to be accepted by the customers. Therefore, we must offer something what the customers are looking for and hence we need to know what the customers really want. For that the first step is gathering raw data from the customer. So, that is we will see how we gather raw data. Then interpret the raw data in terms of customer need. See customers are basically laymen, they are not the technical people. So, they will say or they will express their need in their own language. At the job of the design team will be to transform this language of the customer or to understand what the customer really looking for and then transform the customer need to product need. We will come to that later on. Next one is organize the need into primary, secondary and tertiary needs. There are so many needs that could be there and there are needs and under those needs there could be secondary or tertiary needs. We will come to that what we mean by secondary and tertiary needs. And then we have to also establish the relative importance of those needs that is which needs are most important and which needs are less important because that will give the designer some flexibility in the design. It may so happen that all the needs we may not be able to fulfill due to some constraint that we may have with the production process or with the raw material availability or with the cost whatever could there are many reasons and therefore, we need to find out which needs we have to fulfill and which needs we may not fulfill for the time being. And to know that we need to know to what are the relative importance of these needs. Now, the first step was gathering raw data from the customers. So, how to get this raw data? One methodology that we follow is interview method. That is, you try to interview the customers. You reach the customer and discuss the need with the customers. And if we want to really know the need, the question that comes how many customers we should go and interview? At least 10 interviews are to be conducted. You may approach many people, some of the people may refuse to really get interviewed, few of them will agree. So, at least to get some idea about the various needs, you should at least have 
10 uh, customers with us with whom we can have an interview session and get their need statements. The other thing is observing the product in use. That is, you see, you go to a place where the product is being used by someone, some user, and see by yourself that what are the various actions that the user is using while no, using your product. Suppose I give an example, let us say we make a product a uniform for firefighters. Now, for such firefighters, we can interview them to find out what are the, uh, let us say, uh, positives and negative attributes of the uniform that he is, uh, he is currently using. At the same time, we can ask him to perform certain task using there is wearing that particular uniform and actually see the product in use because that will also reveal or that will also help us to get many informations. We can take photographs, we can video record the activity and analyze these photographs or the recording later on to find out that what are the let us say stretches at different parts of the uniform for doing different types of activities and that information could be a good input for the designing of an uniform. So, that is what we say and sometimes if it is required we can the design one of the design member can perform the task for which the product is meant for that is to get an this is personal experience about the product, the design team member or the designer himself actually make use of that product and try to do certain activities which is relevant for that product just to find out the first hand experience about the utility or usefulness of the product. Other guidelines is that that should not the while interviewing we should not try to convince what the customer needs or not. There is I no need to give any suggestion to them. This point we have to keep in mind, and the interactions are generally verbal in nature, or it could be question answer session that we can design a question sheet and then ask the customer to fill it up. So, that could be a way of also you know, find out what is the customer is looking for or we can have a verbal question answer. Then let us say if I go for a interview session, then what sort of questions we should pose to the customer? So, some guidelines is given here like when and why do you use this type of product? It all depends upon the nature of the product. We can ask questions like this. Another example, show us a typical session using the product. Next is what do you like about the existing product? Next, what do you dislike about the existing product? And what issues do you consider when you purchase the product? What came to your mind while deciding this is the one I am going to pick up? Is it cost? Is it color? Is it the feel of the product? Whatever it is, I mean what is your purchasing decision? If there are products available from company A, company B, company C, then what it is that you know, 
that compel you not compel i should say that that really you know drove you to choose a product from a specific company or from a specific brand so such questions and the other question could be what improvements would you make to the product suppose i give you a give you a freedom then what sort of improvement you feel that you need to do in the product so these are the some of the you know, typical questions which can be posed to the customer next come the documentation of the interactions any interaction that we have we have to really keep a record of that so one is audio recording today everybody has a mobile phone so you can easily record the conversation between you and the customers but as it is said that sometimes it may be intimidating to the customer some customers may not like to be recorded so you have to see that who are really quite open while um, we record their conversations and some people may also may not like it so then we have to leave them other thing is taking notes that is handwritten notes are most common that is, as you you know converse with a person the or another colleague he could he or she may start noting down the answers which are coming from the customers that way also we can have the other thing is a video recording that is the entire session can be video recorded if that is permitted because that will very very effective for observing the customer in the user environment and it helps to identify the latent customers need or you can go for still photography that is we can take some photographs so these are the way we can document the interaction sessions so i that still photograph or audio recording or video recording or simply noting down whatever is the right method one can choose next steps which is most important is interpretation of raw data the customers are as i said that they are not technical people uh, the design team have a basic you know knowledge about the design so they they are qualified from the point of view of uh, they are basically qualified designers so the language that the customer will use we have to translate that language that means customers need treatment should be transform into product need statement this is a very very interesting and important work to be accomplished the guidelines are that express the need in terms of what the product has to do and not in terms of how it might do this is what we have to keep in mind that is in the statement solution should not come the solution part should be left to the designer the product need statement should not have any solution given there use positive not negative phrasing as far as possible so try to frame the sentence in such a way that no or not such kind of words do not come express the needs as attribute of the product as far as possible avoid the word must and should if i say must or should it implies the level of importance 
for the need. So, if possible, we should try to avoid such things where if it is not at all possible, in some cases we may not be able to you know avoid such words, there we use it. So, here an example is given. Let us say someone is trying to develop a car mechanics uniform. So, we all know the working environment of a car mechanic. So, what type of question should be posed to the uh, customer in this case, the car mechanic? And here, some typical statement given by the customer is stated here, and what should be the corresponding need that we should write that is also stated on the last column of this table. So, let us say the customer statement is I need to bend under the car for repair work. So, while he is wearing the uh, uniform many a times he has to bend. If this is the statement given by him then we can write the interpretation of the need because of this particular posture of the body that the uniform stretches well, the uniform should have a stretching capability because the person is going to bend. It is not an activity where a person is sitting on a chair and writing only. So, that kind of activity is different. So, every profession has a specific activity and depending upon the nature of the activity we have to design the uniform for them. A doctor's activity is different, a mechanics activity is different, a person who is working under the mines his activity is different. So, different people, different professions have different activities. The other suppose statement is many times I need to sit on the floor for repair work. So, this is another statement he makes and therefore, the interpreted need would be the knee and the buttock areas should be should have abrasion resistant. The knee and buttock areas of the garment or the uniform should have should be should have should be abrasion resistant. So, there has to be because when he sits on the floor which is rough usually and when he crouches while performing his task. Therefore, these are the areas which will come into contact with the rough surface, the knee area of the uniform, the buttock areas of the uniform and therefore, these areas we feel that they should be abrasion resistant. Let us say the likes he writes that pockets are of right size, so he likes this part. So, therefore, that means we should write the interpretation interpreted need as pocket sizes are right. Dislikes the fabric of the pockets tears frequently. So, it annoys the, the customer because he has to carry the tools, many of them are basically metallic tools. So, he may be using the pocket for keeping some of those screwdrivers or some other things mind small you know, equipments that he needs for his work and therefore, the fabric tears is something which he dislikes. So, interpreted need would be the fabric of the pocket are strong that we have to make the fabric strong. So, this is how the need of the product is stated on the right hand side keeping in mind the statements made by the customers which is given on the left hand side. So, like that could be statements could be many more and accordingly we have to keep writing the need of the product. Okay. Now, 
next part is organize the need into hierarchy. So, primary needs are can be written in the form of secondary needs or in the form of tertiary. How? Let us say the needs are organized into a hierarchy and list of primary, secondary and tertiary. Primary needs are the most general needs, that is something which is most important and in general terms we write the primary needs. Secondary needs express the primary needs in more detail. So, primary needs are broad needs, whereas secondary needs will express the primary needs in more detail and tertiary need will express the secondary needs in further detail if that is required. So, primary needs basically broad needs and secondary needs is a derivative of primary needs. It is about more detailing about the primary needs, it is not that they are less important is not in terms of importance that we are writing primary need, secondary need, tertiary need, not that. It is primary needs written as broad needs and then we try to expand the primary needs which we call them secondary needs. In some situations we may further need to expand it, we will call them tertiary need. And then as an example, we show it a primary need is protection from cold, that is the primary need of a customer, protection from cold, let us say for a winter jacket. So, that means, if the secondary needs will automatically means from here non wetting, if the jacket is wet, the insulation values goes down and therefore, heat will be conducted very fast. See so, the warmth or protection from cold is required, it has to be non wetting material. Then insulation is most important there and third is also wind resistance, that is the wind should not be able to penetrate the, the garment. So, primary need we go to more detailing is or are basically these you know, non weighting needs, insulation need and wind resistance need. Now, establish the relative importance of the needs. Once the needs are ready, primary needs are ready with us, now we can have some kind of importance we attach that which needs is most important to be fulfilled and which needs are less important to be fulfilled. The importance is given on the suggestion of the team members based on their experience with the customers. So, which need is most important, which is less important, it is, it is the customers feedback is most important here or the people in the marketing department people also because they are the people who always you know in touch with the customers. So, they can also give you some idea about the importance of different needs. So, when there are so many needs, some you can give importance 10, some needs of importance 8 or 6 or 5 or 4, 3, 2 whatever, some values we attach, some numerical values just to quantify the importance of the need and then Sometimes all these needs we may not be able to fulfill to the extent that we that the customer wants, we may go for a trade off of different needs, keeping in mind the cost part also, because we have to also see the purchasing power of the customers. Customer may like something, but if I want to you know introduce that into the product, then the product cost may go so high that the customers 
may not be able to purchase it. So, even though they, they look for it in the product, but they may not be able to pay for it. These things you have to also keep in mind and therefore, some trade off will be required in many situations. An example of firefighter suit, what are the performance need of the firefighter suit? One is comfort and the other one protection from heat, that could be third one, that could be fourth one, I have not written all of them. So, let us say in comfort is the primary need and the secondary needs would be thermal related physiological load, tactile comfort that is about feel about the product and how the product feels on the skin. So, from sense of touch the tactile comfort, the tactile comfort related to basically the, the kind of sensation we get when we touch a product and because most of the well, lot of textile products are actually remains in contact with the human body. Therefore, tactile comfort is also very, very important, but what kind of sensation we get when we wear something on our skin. The other is ergonomics related part is also could be a part of comfort and here fit, the weight, the stretch, the bulkiness, all this you know, attributes will come. These are all part of the comfort. If fit is not well, we will not feel comfortable. If the weight is too heavy, we also may not feel comfortable. If it is too bulky a product, we will not feel comfortable. So, all these are secondary and the primary is the comfort. So, primary need secondary. Similarly, the another primary need is protection from heat and it we can have the secondary needs are thermal resistance, the openings that we have in the garment. Here we are discussing about the fire fire pursuit is the complete ensemble. Is thus not the fabric, it is the complete product. Therefore, openings also is a is important because the openings are there, the heat will easily pass to the human body. And therefore, openings also would be an important part. So, we can write some more like that. So, these are typical examples that we have taken. Now, another example questions for let us say determining physiological load. If we want to design, determine the physiological load, if we want to determine then what sort of questions we can have. Then question 1, use the scale below to give your judgment for how warm you feel. So, we say at different points, if it is a firefighter suit, after wearing a suit, the fireman goes in front of the fire and the level of discomfort he feels that depends upon how much, what sort of temperature he feels at different parts of the body, does he get suffocated with it or not, all these things will matter. So, let us say we write questions where at different body parts, how much sensation he gets from the point of view of heat. So, feet let us say scale 1 means normal, 2 means comfortably hot, 4 means uncomfortably hot, 6 means hot, 8 means very hot. So, these are the different feet, legs, arms are different 
parts of the human body and on the right hand side values are quoted. So, few values are just arbitrary values I have given in the table, but while actually carrying out the um, your the need exercise while you are interviewing the person, then we can ask such questions and try to find out what is the performance of the existing garment. Then also we can pose question like how sweaty you found your palm or feet, because there is a lot of thermal load and therefore, the person may start sweating after some time and sweat is going to accumulate inside the body and the sweat uh, liquid sweat will you know, basically wet the garment and as a result the insulation value of the garment will go down. Besides, there will be a very a sensations of the wetness which is also not very comfortable for us. We do not like a wet cloth around our body. We always like a dry cloth to be there. If your garment is wet and is contact with the skin, the kind of sensation that we get, we do not like it. So, we usually remove the wet cloth from our body if it is a wet shirt and we replace it by a dry shirt. Why we do it? Because we do not like that kind of sensation. So, if, if it is internally somebody sweating, his inner garments are wet, it will stick to the skin and the kind of sensation that we will get we will dislike. So, that will be uncomfortable from that tactile comfort boot. So, again let us look into the questions that we can have for determining physiological load. A typical question could be use the scale below to give your judgment for how warm you feel. How warm you feel at different parts of the human body and there is a arbitrary scale starting from 1 to 8 or 10, we can write it 1 would mean normal, 2 means comfortably hot and 8 means very hot and the person may be asked that you, how do you rate in a scale of 1 to 10 about the feeling of hotness at the feet, at the legs, arms or back or shoulders like that and we get the data and these data we analyze to know whether any deficiency exists from the thermal insulation point of view or not. The other questions could be how sweaty you found your palm, did you experience any problem during session besides heat and sweating that is in terms of movement of the body whether there was difficulty in running, in bending, in twisting, in jumping because a firefighter is going to you know, all sort of body postures you will have. How far the clothing reduces your freedom of movement is all related to this that is while he is working there in the very tense situations and a lot of stress and under such conditions or situations the person is going to work and therefore, freedom of movement uh, of is very, very important. See the clothing or the uniform should not really create too much of difficulty in terms of movement difficulty. The how easy it was to close your zipper when the suit was wet, because they will be also using a hose to douse the flame, suppose there is a burning and the firefighters are going to douse the flame, obviously there will be hose pipes and the water will be poured on different parts of the building and therefore, there is a chance that the fireman itself can also be wet externally and we all know that water is a good conductor of heat. So, we have to keep it in mind that under that situations, there are different ways through which the 
uniform may lose its insulation value. Wet because of external source of water, or even it can the person the, the internally the garment can be wet because of thermal load leading to sweating. Anyway, such kind of questions can be raised to find out how good the existing uniform is. Question related to fit could be like this uh, as an example, how does the suit fit you? The response already stated too small, good or too large, the person may be asked to tick simply. So, that you make his or her work little less. So, we can already give the response in terms of as written in this uh, particular table and the customer may be asked just simply to tick it. So, different set of questions are stated, let us say how well can you bend forward, badly acceptable or good. So, the person is going to you know, tick whatever he, whatever he feels the right response for him. So, like that the different questions are to be designed, response may be written sometimes or sometimes we may not write it, but the design team should be should have the capability to write many questions like this in order to extract all useful informations from the customer. There are some more questions regarding to ergonomics comfort, questions on freedom of movement, how is the freedom of movement in the suit, if any limitation is present could you describe this? How easy it is to lift your legs? How easy it is to lift your arms? Do you find the suit too baggy that is too voluminous that is difficult to manage? Or comment about the weight of the suit, is the suit appears to be too heavy? So, things like that questions we can pose and response either we write or we ask the customers to write or we just talk to the customers and write ourselves whatever is you know is the whatever is convenient we can choose that format. With this we close this particular session where we are trying to find out what the customers really wants, so what are the needs and requirement of the customers. Once we have that with us, as I said, the next job will be need to customers need to product need statements and then giving some sort of importance to all such needs. And once that is ready, we go for the next step of the design process. That is I think the next step we should go is specification development. So, this is closed. Thank you.